All right, I'm going to do a roll call before we call the meeting to order. David Dunn? Here. Wallace Dunn? Present. Dr. Davenport? Here. Dr. Benton? Doc, uh, Mr. Tippin? Here. Uh, Mr. Here. Huey? Here. And that was Dr. Benton, I think, but it looks like he's here. He's muted. Okay, thank you, Dr. Benton. All right, so we can go ahead and call um, call to order the Hector County Hospital District, District Finance Committee meeting on May 5th at 5 o'clock. And the first item on the agenda is to review the review of minutes for April the 7th, 2019 meeting. Make a motion for approval. I'll second. All right, I have a motion, a second, and we'll need to do a roll call vote. Uh, David Dunn? Yes. Wallace Dunn? Aye. Uh, Ms. Dr. Davenport? Aye. Uh, Dr. Benton? Aye. Uh, Mr. Tippin? Yes. Uh, Mr. Ewing? Yes. And I will also approve that. So um, that will pass. And then at this time, we have the conflict of interest uh, disclosure by any board member. So at this time, if there's anything um, that's a conflict of interest for you at this time, it's your time to disclose that. Also on the agenda, this is the, the opportunity for anybody in the public to make comments on any of these related agenda items on the finance committee meeting only. Um, before you, if you speak, um, you need to state your and uh, so Jan can report that information and then you're able to speak. Wait a few seconds. Got people on the call. Okay, I don't hear anybody. So uh, we're going to move on. And so we'll uh, move over to Mr. Charlie Brown for our quarterly investment report uh, quarter two fiscal year 2020. Okay, Madam Chair, I'm going to mute everybody except for Mr. Brown. Thank you. Okay, Charlie, you'll have to unmute yourself. Hello. There yeah, you go. We got you. This is pretty scary. You guys may figure out I'm not smart enough to do a conference call. <laughs> um, are we? Are we going? We on? We are. All right. Um, this is uh, this is kind of a new uh, new setup for me and for everybody. But something I guess we're going to have to get used to. I don't know whether it's going to be the new normal or not. Um, it's definitely created some trying times for the hospital and definitely some interesting times from an investment standpoint. Stock market seems to be recovering and the bond market uh, continues to hover at these lower rates. Uh, we had uh, about $10 million worth of Fannie Mae's uh, that matured or that were actually called a month or so ago. So we have a little more cash than we normally would at this time. Um, and because of the uncertain nature of what's, what's going on, uh, Steve, we decided to hold on to the cash for a bit and, and see what the needs are before we invest anything longer term, although there's not much uh, incentive for doing that right now. Um, the... Uh, is the first screen you got up there that says yield summary? Yes, it is. Okay. If you'll if you'll notice, uh, we've got where our average weighted average yield is close to one percent. Now that's it, that seems kind of low, but considering the fact that you go out ten years and buy a treasury note, you get just a little more than one half a percent. So technically, from where we are with as short term as we are, we're doing. Uh, we're doing very well according to the market. Since those Fannie Mae's matured, the maturity the, the entire portfolio now is considered short-term investments. 
because they're all due within uh, a year or less. Um, by the way, if you'll uh, notice, you go out, the 30-year Treasury note still is at 1.35%. You just think about that. You invest your money for 30 years, and that's all you get is 1.35%. So if you go to the next slide, which is the, um, the yield curve, Yes, and you can see you can see the difference in in yield from uh, from a year ago, and uh, as as you can tell, everything has dropped significantly. Um, it, it's still more of a normalized yield curve, though it does it does get the, the, your yield gets higher as the longer you go out. It's just not by much. Uh, but that is a normal slope of a yield curve. And if you look at it a year ago, we had somewhat of an inversion where you got a higher return for your shorter investments than you did for your medium-term investments. Um, the next one just shows that, um, that this is the, attribution, the, the, the distribution by asset type, and they're all considered short-term investments, although they are invested and they are invested in uh, government agencies. They're still considered short-term because they all mature in less than a year. Uh, we, have, uh, we have in cash right now, let me get that page. In cash, we've got about $20 million. Um, the rest is invested in shorter-term uh, agencies and treasury notes and some cedars. We have about $17 million maturing over the next four months. So we'll be in pretty good shape as far as handling any cash flow needs that, that the hospital may have. Hopefully you won't have to use it all, but we will have it all. We will have a lot of it available for you. Uh, that uh, where we're going from here, I suspect we're going to see interest rates stay in this area for some time. We may see a rebound in in the stock market, and hopefully when the economy gets going again, the big negative to come out of all of this is we're going to add a, probably another four trillion dollars to our debt. And at some point, I guess my grandkids are going to have to deal with that because once interest rates become more normalized, the you know we can find we can fund that kind of debt that kind of debt based on interest rates today. But I mean, because the government can borrow money for thirty years for one point three percent, but we get back to where it's normal interest rates, and that rate would be up around five percent then that's going to be a huge, huge number. So that's hopefully, hopefully they will, our politicians will address that at some point and do something to uh, start reducing it. But that's the only real problem area that I see on the horizon. Oil is not going to stay down below 20 bucks a barrel. Um, and I would imagine it's, we're probably going to see it back in 24, $30 range with the, within this year. That's really all I've got. There's uh, not much exciting going on. And, uh, you know, I, I talked to Steve and get my direction from, you know, how he feels, what their cash flow needs. And, and we stay in touch and so that if when we get to the point where we think that there are some opportunities for longer term investments, and the hospital's in a position to be able to uh, to make those that, that will take that action when it's needed. Do you have any questions? Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Brown? What's well, a good thing that we trust Mr. Ewing, isn't it, since uh, you're, <laughs> you're talking to him, he's giving you guidance on what to do? <laughs> um, well, it's... You know, the, again, there's, it, and I've mentioned this before. There's only so much we can do, and uh, and right now, the marketplace just doesn't make sense to go out and and invest long. If we could get an extra two percent by investing in ten years instead of five years, we'd probably consider it. 
but that just isn't the case, and you're not going to take that kind of risk for a half a percent. Right. All right. Any any other thoughts? Any other questions for Mr. Brown? Well, thank you so I much. Have none. Um, so I will uh, entertain. We're voting on this, correct, Jan? No. I don't no, think we don't have to prove it. No. We don't have to prove it. Okay. No. All right. Thank you, Charlie. And so we'll move on to quarterly investment officer certification, Mr. Ewing. Well, thank you, and thank you very much. I'm going to sign off now. Thanks, Charlie. Okay. Take care. All righty. Bye. Good luck. All right. So uh, for the previous quarter, second quarter, uh, you'll find in the packet the uh, attestation uh, that we did not uh, buy anything uh, during the second quarter. We did have, as Charlie mentioned, the $10 million mature or get called, uh, but we've left that in uh, money market funds for the time being, just knowing where our cash needs will probably be over the next uh, 60 to 100 days. So um, I submit our, our um, quarterly investment report certification. And then from there, let me go on into the uh, financial presentation. OK, so um, what I'm going to speak to uh, on this and hopefully everybody can see the the numbers. Uh, most of my references <clears throat> will be to prior year as opposed to budget simply because from a prior year perspective, uh, we need to see where we stand. Uh, our budget for the most part has become more and more um, unattainable with the COVID um, crisis that we're currently in. So if we look at our admissions compared to prior year, uh, we're off 10.5% for the month. Uh, you'll notice that the decline or the gap between budget and prior year um, is probably the most significant for all six lines that are within the graph for six months. And that's simply because um, we did see a noticeable decline in admissions starting about the middle of March, and we will continue seeing that through all of April. And uh, as we sit here today on the fifth day of May, uh, we're still significantly below our, our annual run rate on admissions and average daily census. So compared to prior year, we're off 10%. Year to date, we're slightly ahead of prior year and on a year to on an annualized basis, we're still two and a half, 2.4% better, but I expect the annualized and year to date to trend into negative numbers as we go through April and May. Adjusted admissions reflect a comparable uh, decline at 9.3% compared to prior year. Uh, that's simply because our outpatient volume uh, very much uh, mirrored our inpatient volume across the board in the hospital. Average daily census you can see for the month was at 169.6. That is in line with our admissions. Um, and uh, we will see a little bit lower number in the month of April. Deliveries uh, still were fairly strong at 175. You can see it was above prior year. And on a year to date basis, we're still 12.3% ahead of last year. And on an annualized basis, we're at a 16% run rate. So deliveries continue to be very strong uh, within the hospital. Total surgery cases. This is, um, uh, we did have a decline that had already started before uh, all elective cases were pulled starting March. 24th, I believe. It was either the 23rd or the 24th to 23rd. Okay, the 23rd. So we came in at 616 for the month. And um, I will tell you that for the month of April, we're a little bit above 300, I believe 309. So the, the, even though this is a pretty significant decline from 
uh, January and February numbers. Uh, April will be half of this number and it will be part of the revenue shortfall we'll talk about with April. For emergency room visits, uh, surprisingly, it's off 10% also. Um, and it continues to be that way as we uh, are here in, in the early part of May. Uh, outpatient uh, was only 7% uh, at 22,266. We still on a year-to-date basis are ahead of last year and our annualized number is at 2.4% to last year. But you'll notice that the, the gap between budget and prior year, um, which is uh, the March line graph, uh, is the most significant. Uh, urgent care visits, uh, we're pretty much in line, and that's simply because we have a lot of visits uh, occurring at our urgent care uh, to include the 42nd Street location. Here's our pro care office visits, which we would expect that to be off as significant as it is, just given the, um, the, the close of, of offices and moving a lot of our visits to telehealth, though that is going, um, it surely doesn't replace all the volume of people coming in the door. Staffing, um, even though there's been a lot of changes in staffing for the month, um, uh, Jan, something's popped up on the top. I'm not sure if there's anything we need to do. But okay, it just may be the way that. that. All right, so staffing, we're at 1,973 FTEs consolidated, uh, which is comparable to last year. So uh, there, there have been lots of adjustments that we've made to staffing. Uh, they just did not materialize until the early part of April. Uh, we did start flexing, but the payroll that uh, hit in the latter part of March uh, did not, re the accrual that we made for that um, did not reflect the adjustments that we started at the, in the last week of March. We will see a fairly significant decline in April when we look at April numbers. Uh, that being the case, because staffing did not change much, though our volumes were off 10%. Um, Jan, this is not. Here we go. Let's go back. Here we go. Since, um, since. FTEs uh, were not adjusted at the end of March, though our volumes had declined. You'll notice that our paid hours per adjusted patient day showed a significant increase of 11.3%. Um, and that's just reflective of the fact that we have the same number of FTEs and a 10% decline in volume numbers. Uh, paid hours per adjusted patient day will come back more in line with the April numbers. Accounts receivable, uh, we did collect 22,838,000 uh, dollars for the year. Uh, that is um, slightly behind last year's number, but better than the month of February. Uh, we did see some improvement in collections from RevWorks um and april uh, will be slightly below that number uh, though when we look at the trend the last uh six months i believe only two months we've exceeded prior years so that's an area that i continue discussing almost on a daily basis with revworks and um, what we're trying to do to get um, collections back up I will tell you, though, that I would expect in the month of May that that's the month we are collecting March receivables or should start collecting March receivables. And we will see a decline just given the volumes that we did see uh, starting to, to, to tell off in the month of March. Our gross receivables have made an improvement coming down. Um, part of this is the seasonal uh, numbers we're looking at, and part of it is 
improvements in uh, collections. Revenue, uh, you can see our gross revenues are off uh, at 11.4% to prior year, which is in line with our volumes. Our net patient revenues, now I'm going to take a moment and, and explain how uh, even though gross uh, patient revenues can be off 11%, uh, net patient revenues being up by 10%, that's simply because within the month, we uh, had a year-to-date adjustment that was positive, uh, that is for our Medi Medicaid supplemental payments to the tune of about $5 million. Uh, we did a true up uh, mid-year, as opposed to waiting to the end of the year to catch uh, any positive or negative, and uh, we, we reflected that in this month's numbers. So realistically, if I was to take that out, we would be at $21.3 million in net patient revenues without that, uh, that one-time adjustment. Other revenues continue to be off from budget in prior year. Uh, namely, it's our sales tax. Uh, we did have some increase in our property taxes, but overall we do see a decline in our uh, overall other revenues. Operating expenses, uh, mainly just due to salary, wages, and contract labor, were comparable to last year. Uh, we will see that come down. There have been significant improvements made in flexing during the month of April. Um, anywhere to the point now, we're uh, right at 25% off of our current run rate uh, prior to the COVID on overall salary wages and labor. Employee benefits uh, for the month are down, but on a year-to-date basis are even, and that's just simply due to uh, us accounting for our pension costs uh, that are reflective of what happened in the market prior year. Supply expenses uh, are flat with last year. Uh, we did have Additional expenses incurred as we uh, started ramping up in some in property, or we should say, uh, personal protective equipment uh, for the month, and that's reflective in this. Purchase services uh, still continues to be an area that we are working on. We have made some improvements in the month of April, uh, which we will talk about offline. Um, and total operating expenses are comparable to last year. Year to date, you can see we're at 194 versus 186 for prior year, which brings us to our operating EBITDA. We're basically flat this month. And again, that is simply be due to the fact we've got an additional $5 million in that number. So that brings our year to date to a loss of negative 3.5 compared to the prior year of 11. Um, I will tell you that we will be seeing negative numbers in our EBITDA for the next uh, two months. Uh, I won't project any further out because we just don't know where our surgery volumes will land in the month of uh, July and August. But for the month of April, I can tell you that we were off 40% in gross revenues which should translate into about a $15 million shortfall in net patient revenue, which will generate an operating EBITDA loss. So we continue to uh, find ways to um, stem the flow of money going out. We are looking at everything and we have uh, canceled some contracts. We have asked for modifications to others and uh, we will at some point bring those numbers back to uh, the board uh, with improvements that have been made. Finally, day's cash on hand is still at 63.9. Uh, I would tell you that that part of that is due to the fact that we've already started slowing down paying uh, vendors um, and we've tried to keep our cash on the receivable side coming in. Um, and remember, it's a timing difference, even though March had a decline in net patient revenue, 
we won't see the actual cash decline until the latter part of May and into early June. So I would expect during the month of May to start burning through some of the 63 days worth of cash that we have on hand. Um, we are, Grant and I are working on a 90 day um, uh, weekly cash flow projection, which at the next board meeting, uh, I will speak more to. And finally, our debt service ratio uh, did improve, but we're still below the required at 110. And until we uh, get past generating negative EBITDA numbers, we will be out of compliance on this measure also. With that, I will uh, open it up to any questions to the board members. Jen, how do you take them off mute? So thank, they're good. thank you, Mr. They have, Ewing. They have to unmute themselves. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. If you'd thank like you. to ask any questions, just remember to unmute yourself. Thank you, Mr. Ewing. Um, do we have any questions uh, at this time over the financial report? I don't have any. Wallace, do you have any questions? Uh, I do not. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it, sir. Um, Steve, do we need to approve the quarterly investment officers certification separate from the rep financial report? Yes, please. Okay, I'm, I wanted to clarify before I moved on um, since you combined those. So let's go ahead and move back to the officer certification. I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion for approval. David? Wallace Dunn will second. I have a motion and a second. Let's go ahead and do a roll call vote. So David Dunn? Yes. Wallace Dunn? Aye. Dr. Davenport? And Dr. Benton? Aye. Okay, <laughs> I was giving you time. I know you're having to unmute it. Dr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Tippin? Aye. Mr. Ewing? Aye. All right, so then we'll move on to the last one. We're gonna, I'll entertain a motion for the financial report. Make a motion for approval, David. Wallace Dunn will second. I have a, a motion and a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Doc, David Dunn? Aye. Wallace Dunn? Aye. Dr. Davenport? Aye. Dr. Benton? Aye. And Mr. Tippin? Aye. And Mr. Ewing. Aye. All right. And I, um, of course, approve of both of those. So those both pass. I'm sorry, Jan, I didn't say that earlier. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of this, y'all. It's, it's all good. All right. I, before we end the call, I just wanted to thank uh, admin. I know that y'all have been making some very tough decisions um, about our financial state. And I know it's not pleasant. I know that it's difficult. And so I appreciate your honesty and the transparency that you provide the board and to this community about our financial state and the decisions that you're making. And I I'm just want y'all to know that um, we appreciate you very much. Thank you. And with Thank that, uh, our meeting is adjourned. <clears throat>